Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video we are going to do a somewhat inadvisable thing with the Orion carrier planes. You can see four planes arrayed around a core that has four nuclear engines on it. Timowin 250s. Don't take the Timowin thing too seriously. It doesn't have to be a pillow bed nuclear reactor. They are just super enormous nuclear engines and there are four of them. That's sufficient. Uh, that's enough for uh, for us to know at this point and it is a long core filled with hydrogen its uh, diameter incidentally is well right here it's 14 meters and at the bottom it is 18 meters so it is humongous because it is filled with hydrogen which is not very dense and then we have a payload on top a test payload I have not launched this or attempted to launch this we are going to find out the test payload is 400 tons so that's huge uh, and our first stage, as it were, are, is recoverable. The first stage consists of four Orion carrier planes, each with nine Raptor sea level engines. Uh, so 36 altogether. This is somewhat heavier than the SpaceX Super Heavy, uh, but its capacity is potentially 400 tons, though that is mainly because its upper stage is a nuclear stage, which, um, if it's only used once, is inadvisable. I mean, it is an inadvisable use of the Orion carrier plane. But we will see how it works. Critically, uh, for the Orion carrier plane launching out of Boca Chica to be able to land at Cape Canaveral as it is intended to, uh, the carrier planes have to get to a velocity of about 3,800 meters per second. That's the orbital velocity. It's 3,400 sea level or ground speed. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so, We'll have to see whether they get to that or whether they surpass. They can't surpass that too much, otherwise they'll overshoot. So the max is about 3,600 meters per second ground speed. So it's very particular. And we'll see how that works out. But they would, in theory, be able to decouple off and then fly down to Cape Canaveral without any trouble, without reserving much fuel. And that is an idea. But, of course, the nuclear engine thing. Yes, I know you don't really want to light nuclear engines in flight and everything. Uh, it'll be outside of the atmosphere, at least. But, yeah, this came about because of an idea to have fly uh, to recreate the Soyuz system with flyback boosters, but also with RD-170s. So, that was the start of it. So, take Soyuz, make it bigger, put RD-170s at the bottom. But then, you know, uh, Russia did things. So um, uh, then I thought about maybe using the AR-1 as a replacement because AR-1 is a kerosene oxygen engine with uh, any if you cluster four of them together, they have similar capabilities to the RD-170 and nobody's using an AR-1 these days anyway. So uh, yeah, maybe I'll think about doing that still. But I did have this already tested Orion carrier plane with its Raptor engines and this is a much bigger system. So better, I guess. Uh, bigger is better. That, uh, yeah, so we'll see how it works. Let's just bring it outside. And um, it does occur to me that I may have forgotten to add a probe core into the core because we, we have them on the carrier plane. So once they decouple, there'll be no control. So let me just toss one on top of the tank for now. Well, it's an interesting looking thing, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's an interesting looking thing. It's not your normal looking rocket, that's for sure. All right, well, uh, and we've got some latent tilt. We're not quite straight. We've got some latent velocity. All sorts of interesting things are happening with this that we don't want to have happen. <laughs> I'm going to just have Smart ASS start out going straight up. Actually, we want a heading of 75, so let's just start off with that. Okay, ignition. Throttle up. And launch. Uh, don't hit anything. Its thrust to weight ratio seems a little bit low. It's still sort of going off to one side here. 1.28. I think the control location is weird. Hold on. Let me make sure. Uh, maybe it's one of the planes that's being the controller right now. Control from here. Yeah, that was it. Well, that's just a bundle of awesome, isn't it? 
I think we might want to light the the Timberwinds or nuclear engines shortly before the boosters separate. There's no RCS on it otherwise, so they would lose control without that. Oh, so looking at our Delta V on this stage is not going to get quite fast enough, though we'll see. So the reason why we're using nuclear engines and the hydrogen tank is simply because otherwise the four Orion carry planes wouldn't fit, right? Because it needs some wide tank in the middle so that the wings can be accommodated. And the only propellant that would require such a wide tank is hydrogen. Even a hydrogen-oxygen mix would be too dense because of the oxygen. In other words, it'd be too heavy light. Our thrust weight ratio was already barely getting off the ground, right? So if you tried a hydrogen-oxygen mix, it wouldn't get off the ground if it was this big. So we could only have hydrogen, and with only hydrogen, we had to use nuclear engines. So there was no choice. I was forced into this, I swear. Uh, I should have had something to turn off. The, the action group for the Orion carrier plane might still be active on them. I'm not sure, though. But we would have liked some way of turning off the engines because throttling down would also turn off the nuclear engines once we start them. And in fact, I am now going to start them. It's got to take them some time to spool up anyway. The sheer size of the engines also helped, of course. That reduced the size of the tank necessary. Now let me test whether my action was worth. Ah, uh, they do, so... That's good. But I don't think we're going to end up going fast enough like this for the planes to work out. But we'll test the payload capacity first, and then we'll test the, the carrier plane recovery. Okay, shutting off the methane engines, and separation. Oh, they separate off cleanly. Look at them! Aren't they awesome? And uh, they have uh, some Delta V left, just enough for RCS control on the way down, really. And let's get rid of the fairings, hopefully. Ooh. But we have we have more than we need to get to orbit right now. So it can carry more than 400 tons. Oh, if it has time, though. I wanted... Well, 90 is fine here. Nope, oh, pitch 15, it's at but we want to increase that. Unfortunately, it's still an eight minute burn time here. So yeah, maybe the need to keep our angle up like this in order to accommodate the burn time might hurt our delta V and therefore limit it to 400 tons capacity. Okay, well, we are well past Florida and it looks like maybe the 400 tons is a good estimate. We'll probably want to add some more stuff to this uh, so that it can be used as a transfer stage and refueled or something. So having some leftover would be a good idea. We probably want RCS ports and such on it. It's just a regular tank right now, by the way. Not like a balloon tank or anything. We hardly need to go to such lengths. Okay, well, that's 333 by 315 with 300 meters per second left, so that's all right. But what about the recovery of the carrier planes? That is the question. Oh, we could possibly throw on some MLI layers to reduce the boil off. That's another thing we could do. Uh, maybe some radiators even. Anyway, so yes, let us try it again, but this time follow a carrier plane down to see where it ends up. Okay, whoa, the fairing is separated for some reason. I don't know. Uh, let's control from the right location. We still got this residual uh, speed here, and I don't know what's up with the fairings. And, you know, the tank looks like it's offset too. I swear. There's Krakens involved. 
see if we can defy them. Okay, here we go. Ignition. And launch. Well, it's sort of straightened up there. I think the fairings are back together again, too. All weird. Okay, I think I will try to ignite the nuclear engines a little bit earlier. To help boost us along. Well, I mean, again, it's going to take some time for them to school up to. Oh, yes, yeah, so we can turn some engines off. But it looks like we're going to end up about the same speed as last time. And not as fast as the Orion carrier plane is normally going when it finishes its main business. Okay, and separation. And this has enough, but that is basically what it had last time. We are following this one, I have decided. We really don't want to be anywhere near the others, but that might be unavoidable. Got to be all sorts of bad business because they're there. Including potentially physics issues. Especially when they explode. No, well, it's going out there. And it is out of audible range. So our trajectory, well, it sort of falls here, but we will of course glide a bit. But whether we'll get all the way to Cape Canaveral, I don't know. Okay, we have entered the atmosphere now. Okay, getting some lift, and we'll see how it behaves. Oh, uh, did I auto strut? Yeah, I have. Here come the G forces. It will be automated. Meant to be an automated system. Okay, up it goes. Uh, is it up going enough? I don't think so. So we might have to go to a higher inclination and maybe land at Pensacola or something. I don't think it's gonna go all the way to Cape Canaveral, but we'll continue to see. I mean, the higher inclination thing is possible. That's not necessarily a problem, barring the whole nuclear thing, you know. Okay, second bounce up. But we're getting pretty slow now. That wasn't even much of a bounce up. It's going to go down again. Maybe we'll make it to Florida here. Somewhere in Florida. We could have kept the jet engines on. Then it would definitely have made it. Do we have to worry about cutting a little bit into the 400 tons that we can carry to orbit? I don't think so. Yeah, we'll we'll get to the coast and everything. We're just not going to get to Cape Canaveral here. Just a little bit farther. Do the trick. If they were all right with us landing in at uh, Tampa Bay... That would be convenient. Okay, coming in for a landing, uh, wherever this is. North of Tampa Bay. 
Okay, we've glided a bit of a ways, but we are on the final part of the scent. Just trying to slow down here. Okay. And we're stalling. <laughs> I went a little bit too slow there. Okay, that is definitely too slow for it to sustain. And we're slowing down. Not too sure why we're carrying the water and oxygen here. Um, fix that. Okay. So we actually ended up in the middle of uh, Florida. We glided a ways, but still long enough a ways from Cape Canaveral that that wasn't doable. I could have maybe fired the engine for just a little bit of, of extra boost, but yeah, we'll need to refine this. Oh, we only have one of them out for some reason. I don't know why. Oh, well, anyway. So that was the idea. 400 tons to orbit. Uh, you'll have to ignite the nuclear engines in, in, in along the way. In the atmosphere, actually, there. Uh, not that the exhaust has anything nuclear, but, you know. Anyway, so with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.